Dear Mr Moffat, I am of course a great admirer of your work, however, in this anniversary year, and knowing you are not leaving the job of Doctor Who head writer, executive producer and overall showrunner any time soon, I do have a couple of wee suggestions. 1. The reuse of actors. In the past, Doctor Who would reuse actors without feeling the need to mention it, and I believe this was a grave error. In fact, even Russell T. Davis is need to make Freema Adjaman her own identical cousin from two episodes earlier was not sufficient. I now hear with endless joy that you intend to address the fact that incoming Dr. Peter Capaldi has already been in Doctor Who and Torchwood as two distinct characters, in contrast with the classic series who so lazily just ignored the fact that the sixth Doctor, Colin Baker, had already played Commander Maxill a season earlier. Might I humbly suggest that merely referencing the reuse of an actor within the narrative is insufficient, and that ideally every single scene featuring the Capaldi Doctor's entrance should be met with every single other character, including extras, turning and pointing at the Doctor to shout, Oh look! It's actor Peter Capaldi! Oh look! It's actor Peter Capaldi! If the audience are ever allowed to forget they are watching an act they already know, there is a serious danger of the audience becoming immersed in the story and caring about the events in front of them, which may lead to excessive thought. So far, you have done brilliantly at this, of course, since turning the reuse of an actor into an entire story arc which dominated the whole season of Doctor Who was an ingenious masterstroke and in no way distracting from the story of each episode at all, in no way, means, shape or form. More please! 2. Character Development and Subplots So often in TV and film scripts, there is a dangerous tendency toward seeding events and emotions so that they develop fluidically possibly then developing in some kind of organic way which somewhat resembles real life and may even be relatable for the audience. I personally prefer it when people just break down halfway through an episode for a reason never before hinted at, ideally when it relates to, say, something as big as an adoption storyline which then ends up getting scrapped for time anyway. This is especially effective when someone has spent two years, the UK minimum by law, attempting to divorce their husband without just sitting down and talking, telling him the reason, which ends up working very effectively after all, and then he goes back to her despite her apparently being seriously wrong in the head. It is most effective when it is part of a love story which has already been botched by episodes being shown in the wrong order, so as to rob the audience of the feeling of following the emotional journey of characters you've succeeded in making them care about. I'm not sure why I enjoy all this so much, but I'm guessing it is because of some twisted perverse sexual pleasure it brings me, and I feel sure you feel the same. 3. In the name of the brand. Doctor Who has only been on television for a mere half a century. Are you not worried people may be in serious danger of forgetting the name of the show they've tuned into? Imagine, if you dare, that somebody who really, really wanted to watch Doctor Who was, in fact, already watching Doctor Who, didn't realise they were, in fact, watching Doctor Who, or somehow suffered a random brain hemorrhage, lost all memory, and, confused by the desire to watch Doctor Who even though they actually already were, got all confused, leading to some dreadful accident. Could you live with yourself? Well, could you? I appreciate this must have been some kind of oversight, Mr. Moffat, but do you realise that in the last season you allowed the broadcast of several episodes that did not feature a character mentioning the title at all? Don't get me wrong, I trust whoever was responsible will, of course, have been taken out and shot, but is that enough? Surely the simplest solution is simply to ensure that every sentence in every script must contain the words Doctor and Who in some way, and much bewilderment can be avoided. 4. The Silence A number of problems here. For one, for these creatures to have fangs is a stupid and pointless idea. So why the fuck don't they? But mainly... They have thus far remained utterly true to their original concept, 
with nothing to equal the absurdity of a weeping angel being a statue of liberty. If you now just leave the silence undisturbed, the audience having memories of how effective and clever they were, people might start making unreasonable demands of you, like expecting you not to fuck up the Whisper Men at some point, when we've so far only seen them once, and they're actually pretty good. 5. The Use of Guest Actors I am not against the use of great actors in Doctor Who at all. The names get you views with comparatively little effort, so you get another holiday to talk at conventions and promote yourself. I will forgive Dame Diana Riggs appearance in The Crimson Horror, since you didn't personally write that one. True, her character, the principal villain no less, may have been fully rounded with three dimensions, but this is a mistake any lesser writer could have made without your supervision, and you are entitled to the occasional sick day. But honestly, Celia Imry was barely phoning it in at all. Richard E. Grant was given some worthwhile screen time more than once, and each of them had at least one scene in which they didn't seem wasted at all. And one might even think their agents shouldn't have advised them against appearing in the show, even after flicking through the scripts. If you remind people that actors such as Richard E. Grant and John Hurt are famous because they are good at acting, the audience might be reminded that those actors have been in some serious cinematic masterpieces and go off and watch them instead. Ideally, what you want to do is put them all in a scene with Sir Derek Jacobi, Sir Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart and the ghost of Laurence Olivier, whereupon every character simply repeats the phrase Doctor Who continually for 40 straight minutes while wearing a variety of fancy costumes and playing characters who already died once for some reason. Other than that, please keep up the good work. Al.